All right. Hi, everybody. Okay. So I just wanted to come on here and have like a discussion with you guys and talk to you about going independent. If you're just popping on, feel free to leave a comment and let me know like who's coming in and um, like, so I kind of know who's here. It tells me how many people are here, but it doesn't tell me, um, it doesn't tell me who who is in here. So I like to see who I'm talking to because it's not like a Zoom meeting where I can see your faces. And can you hear me all right? Just want to make sure that you can hear me okay. Um, okay. <laughs> ah, I'm so excited. Okay. Um, so over the past uh, almost, it's going on a year, almost a year, these Chinese companies have started shutting down. And it's, it's been a little insane where teachers have been forced to go independent when they weren't ready to go independent. They were not like, you know, you're not business owners, you are teachers. And to, um, to be forced to go independent, it's, it's like a huge thing. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to talk to anybody. So like about some strategies to go independent, like nobody's talking to me. <laughs> we'll just give it a couple minutes for people to jump on here. So I'll give it like five minutes for people to jump on. Um, and uh, then we'll jump into it. So if you're watching the replay, you could like skip ahead like five minutes. Um, and I'll just make sure. So this has been a really crazy week. I have been doing um, strategy calls for teachers who want to go independent or for teachers who are just really looking to increase their income with the company that they're working for or look for a company. There is, teachers have been having a lot of struggles just trying to figure out like what to do in this new this new um, era, I guess, <laughs> this new way of teaching. So nobody's on yet. This is so weird doing a live where nobody's here and nobody's talking to me. Somebody come on, I will sing. Y'all are so quiet. All right, I'll give it like five minutes. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> so we'll go like five minutes. All right. If you are watching the replay um, or if you're coming on here live now, I will let you know that I'm doing one-on-one -on -one strategy call calls for at least the next week. Um, I don't know how long I'll be doing them for. I know I am fully booked for today and um, I have, I think I have some availability for tomorrow. But I'll put the link in the description box below. So if you want to sign up for a strategy call and just talk and see like where you're at, where you are and where you want to go in your business, um, those have proven to be very, very helpful for the teachers that have been on them. Um, I've noticed that a lot of teachers that are, are coming in, they don't know what to do or where to go. Um, and I just want to make sure, can you hear me? So I'll make sure. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I've got my AirPods on and it doesn't look like my microphone's moving. Okay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> yay. Okay. Good. All right. So, all right. So we'll stop here. Hi, Alexandra. Hi, Green Education Center. I'm not sure who you are, but hi. Um, I feel like that sounds really, really uh, familiar but I'm not sure who you are. Do I know you? I think I do. Okay. So a lot of teachers have been having to uh, go from like fully booked schedules, working for like Palefish or VIP Kid or other places like that. And then these clothes, they lose their jobs. I know over the last couple of weeks, a ton of Palefish teachers just got cut. So if you work from Palefish, oh, it froze. Okay. I knew, I knew that sounded familiar. Okay. So I've talked to you over on Instagram. All right. So a lot of teachers have from Palefish, um, that's like the new thing going on right now is Palefish is finally cutting teachers. And they're, um, 
I've had a lot of people come to me saying that they were working for Palefish, they had fully booked schedules, their students still had lessons, and then suddenly they got um, kicked out of Palefish for um, for reasons that didn't exist, like complaints that didn't happen, um, absences that didn't happen. Like it's it's just been like insane the messages that I've been getting. I mean, every company has had its time to shine like a terrible lightning storm, I guess. And right now it, it's Palefish's turn. Um, so I figured that this was a good time to come on there because many of you know me from Palefish. I was your mentor or your coach for Palefish for a lot of you. And I, so it, it kind of it kind of hits home to me because I do know so many of you and so many of you that I've worked with for so long are now losing their jobs. And um, it's just kind of been like, company after company after company after company. So um, I wanted to talk, come out and talk. And if you have any questions at any point in time, like this is your time to have me. So feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I do want to let you know that I am doing one-on-one -on -one strategy calls. So if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me, I have those. Um, they're free. So, you know, don't, you know, it's just for anybody that wants to figure out where you're going in your business. I will not give you students, but I will show you how to do it. So whether like this is whether you are marketing um, in the Chinese marketplace or um, like on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere that you're marketing, I have strategies. I have a roadmap that um, I can help you with. So, <clears throat> um, but I have seen also that a lot of these companies that are coming out right now, um, new companies are starting and um, other companies that have been in existence are really taking advantage of the fact that teachers are looking for companies and they're cutting their rates to rates that are so low. Like you could literally work at McDonald's and make more money. And I know you guys have seen that, right? Like, especially like, Hey, we'll hire South African teachers, $2 an hour, $3 an hour. And then teachers are so desperate because they're losing their jobs. And they're like, well, $2 an hour is better than nothing. So you add these companies actually have applicants. The thing is, is they're not charging the families two dollars an hour, with the exception of some of the um, some of the countries that are in like Latin America. I know that they actually do char charge students lower rates, but the ones that are marketing in most places, they're hiring teachers for two dollars an hour, and they're charging students a lot more. So they are making bank off of you guys, and that just doesn't sit well for me. So whenever I have a teacher coming to me, and of course there are good companies out there. There is OutSchool. OutSchool will get you students. And, um, you know, like, like they have a lot of students. They have a good system set up. So there's OutSchool. There is AllSchool, which is very, it's like the up and coming OutSchool. They are very much like OutSchool, but they're kind of a starter company. There is my cool class, which is international. So I don't, I don't know the residency requirements for AllSchool. For out school, you have to live in, live. It's not by like native speaker, it's residency. The US, the UK, nope, Dubai, you cannot teach on out school. All school, you might be able to. I do not know their residency requirements. Um, so if you're in Dubai, you can teach on my cool class. You may be able to teach on all school. And then you could go independent as well. If you teach on my cool class, you do need to be prepared to still be bringing in your own students because they are also a startup. They are a teacher's cooperative. So um, once they start growing and they start bringing in more students and they start having more income because they're not um, right now, they're not funded or like by investors because they're owned by the teachers. But once they have more money in, you know, in their piggy bank, basically, they will be marketing to more students. I think they're doing a marketing push in Poland right now. So they do have students and if you're, they actually sent out an email last week saying that they didn't have enough teachers on the platform. There are a lot of, that had their availability open anyways. Um, and if you are a teacher on my cool class, they had sent out an email saying, please open your availability because there are a ton of students that are coming in 
and they don't have the teacher um, presence. Like the teachers are there, but they don't have their schedules opened with enough availability at least to accommodate the students. Um, I'm a math teacher and I'm willing to teach with you coordinately. Um, so I think, okay, so for my cool class, you can definitely teach um, math. I believe you can teach math with all school. I'm pretty sure you can. Um, I don't know if you can work with them for Dubai, but the other thing is that you can always go independent. So if these companies don't work for you for whatever reason, independent is also an option. Um, <clears throat> and I do know that my cool class, if you are in Ukraine or if you're a student in Ukraine, I do know that my cool class is working with Ukraine residents to, um, to help them either like to either help teachers or students. So I don't know if we have anybody that's in Ukraine right now, but I think I don't know if they're still taking teachers for it, but I know they also have a volunteer project going on too. And I thought that was really cool. That was really nice of them. And I apologize. I just jumped out of the shower. So I'm like, my hair is wet and stuff. Um, a lot of times teachers will come to me and they are, okay. So the best option, if you're willing to put the work in, and you're going to be getting your own students, the best option is to be independent. If you want the support of the cooperative and the future growth, because um, if they're successful and they, they grow really well, like their plans are in the future, as well as all of their teaching plat like their teaching platforms and their you know structure, their methods, their payment methods, um, there's my cool class. So there's kind of like three levels right now. So like level one is like, working with a company and the company is going to take a percentage of your income. Um, you may be able to set your rates. So for like out school and all school, you can set your rates. Um, Cambly is also an option. I have seen a lot of teachers go to Cambly. I have never really recommended them because I think that they're kind of low paying, um, especially if you do the Cambly free talk, but, or like the priority hours, like you can literally make like two bucks an hour. Um, so like there's that first level there is where you're working with a company. Your second level that you have is where, or the third level, let's skip to the third level is like, you're totally independent. So you're in control of your booking, your schedule, your payment system, you're like, do the whole nine yards. And then in between would be the cooperative would be my cool class. That's a co-op. It's kind of like in between working with a company and going completely independent. So you just have to kind of figure out what is good for you, like where you want to be and where you want to go. There is no right answer. Everybody's situation is different as far as what works best for them. Some teachers um, like to work for a company. Some teachers like to go completely independent. Um, and it's really up. It's really up to you how you want to do it. You could do one on one lessons. You could do group lessons. Um, yeah, so I, I've, I've seen a lot of, um, very, 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 very low paying companies. And before you apply to a low paying company, I just want you to like, think about if it's what you want to be paid. So if they're paying you less than you know that you're worth then don't accept that. If you want to go into like, say, say you've never ever taught before and you want to jump into a company just so that you can kind of get the teaching experience because going completely independent can be a huge jump. You have to learn how to um, teach and how to market and how to do all the other things all at once. Like it's like, it's a lot to learn all at once. You can go into one of the low pay, low paying companies just to get a little bit of experience. And I would always be growing your independent business on the side though. Like, you know, having that when a lot of online teachers that people follow. So like a lot of the people that like you might find on like YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, a lot of them will tell you that you have to put your um, eggs in different baskets. Like don't put all your eggs in one basket. And they will tell you every single time, this is Romeo, 
every single time he has to make an appearance. He's like, you're paying attention to somebody besides me. Um, he's like the littlest thing. Look at this. Like I have child size hands and he's like, my hands can wrap around him. He's so tiny. Um, and they'll tell you like, go out there and apply to as many companies as you can. So that if one company closes, you still have the others. I agree with that. And I disagree with that. So yes, you can apply to all the companies, but don't work for all of them. So figure out like where you get accepted and, um, what you, where you like teaching. So if you start teaching for a couple of them and you find you're getting a lot of bookings at one and no bookings at another, or you find that, um, you are not liking the structure, the management, the communication of one of the companies, you know, make your decision where you want to work. You don't want to be working for five different companies. Um, on the other hand, if you do work for a company, you should differentiate your differentiate. <laughs> and that's a teaching style. I'm all, I'm all into the teaching mindset right now. You should uh, diversify your income, but not through different companies. The other basket should always be yourself, your independent business. And the reason that I say this is because you don't have control over the other companies. Another company could let you go at any point in time. Maybe you get a complaint and you feel that it's not fair or you just really had a bad week or God knows at the company closes, like what happened with Palefish. Um, or maybe they come out with a new policy or rule or they raise their rates that they're going to be taking from you or whatever, whatever. Maybe they come up with like a new cancellation policy that doesn't fit with your schedule. Whatever it might be. You don't have control over that. You never know what's going to happen with, with another company. However, the other, the other basket, the you basket, you have complete control over that. So if you want to increase your schedule, increase your rates, um, start offering new programs, offer an evergreen program. If you want to create group lessons or, you know, just do, do any, anything that you want to do, that's all on you. And you have complete and total control over that. Whereas like the other companies you want it. So if you have like, instead of having five different companies you're working for, you work for one company and on the side, start building your own business. Okay. So this is like the me basket, right? And then eventually this might grow. If you're doing the right things, this will grow to where you don't have to have the other company at all. And being completely in control of everything is very, very, very empowering. So that's, that, that's my recommendation. I know that it's not what a lot of other people recommend and it's kind of a little bit different, but the only factor that you always have control over is you. So instead of, plus if you work for five different companies, has anybody ever worked for more than one company before? Even working for two companies, it is hectic. So you will go from like, you will go from like, um, Okay. So I, I worked for Palefish and VIP kit at the same time. And I would have to monitor my schedule because I just wanted to get as many bookings. This was when I very, when I first started and I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, getting as many bookings as I could. So, you know, it was before I knew what I was really doing, knowing how to increase my bookings. And I would just open up all my time slots for both companies. And as one booked, I'd close the other, you know, and, and that's like really stressful to keep managing. Plus if you, the other way you could do it is like work on like Palefish and, um, you know, you could work for Palefish and v VIP kid. Okay. You can't, but like, say, like, just say like Palefish VIP kid and magic air, like back in the day when they were all like actually places that you could work, you could do like Palefish on Monday, magic air on Tuesday, VIP kid on Wednesday or something like that. But then you're all, you're making a lower pay rate at each of those companies because they want you to work for only them they would give you pay incentives to open so many hot slots or so many, um, you know, teach so many hours or whatever. Okay. So you just got hired at Cambly Kids. Congratulations. I would also like to teach uh, out school on the side. Is that a good idea? Okay. Um, I, uh, yes, you can. 
So that's really, it's really up to you how you want to do it. So out school is going to pay more than Cambly Kids. Um, you go ahead and if, if you're, you know, if you're getting bookings at Cambly Kids, go for it. But I would really put your focus on out school because out school is a higher paying position than Cambly Kids. So what I would do is I would like work for Cambly Kids, keep that schedule, but really put all of your focus and your energy into growing your out school classes because you make, I forgot what the pay rate is for Cambly Kids and it may have changed. I'd have to look it up. I forgot what it was, but say you make $20 an hour at Cambly Kids and that may be higher and maybe lower. I don't think it's any higher than that, but say you make $20 an hour with Cambly Kids. Um, you can be teaching those same class or the same hours over on out school and you can be making like $120 and that's not an exaggeration. So as far as which one to put more of your energy and focus in, I would definitely put more in out school because they're going to pay you more. Now, I do believe Cambly Kids gives you the curriculum, right? Out school, you will have to make your own or find something like that is the extra. I mean, you're getting paid more, but you're also doing more. So, all right. Does anybody else have any questions? I love teaching you. I like, I, I love, oh, that's another thing. I haven't made this announcement officially. So I'm going to go ahead and I am, I will um, make this announcement. And actually, um, Alexandra, you need to talk to your fiance because I don't think that I've gotten his thing yet. And you know what I'm talking about. I don't think, I don't, yeah, I didn't see him. Um, but yeah, we'll talk later. I sent him a message. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I haven't made this announcement yet, but I I have been talking to you guys. So for those of you who have been following me, I've been talking to you guys about how I've been feeling this like big pull. Okay. And um, like in two different directions. So for those of you who know me, I have been coaching slash mentoring since like 2018, 2019. Um starting as a mentor from Pal for Palefish and um, then going on to helping people without school and going on to helping people that are independent, working with different companies, bringing different companies, recruiters on here, different curriculums on here. Um, so once um, it hit the fan um, over the summer, I, I really felt this pull so I was getting a lot of students, especially in China, like asking me to open up lessons and open up classes. I was already working for out school. I was already independent. And I felt this huge pull from the students to open up a ton of classes. And I have a really hard time saying no. <laughs> it was, it's, it's been a crazy year. Um, so I like have been overworking myself there to begin with. To the point where I just start like I ended up having to start giving students away, and I, I was doing that for a while, and then I've also been getting the huge pull because I I have been coaching or mentoring or helping so many of you in different ways, um, for the past like three years. So I got this huge pull from the teachers because a lot of people were coming to me asking me for help. So in December I was like, okay, I need to decide what I'm going to do because I can't be pulled. Like, you, you, like I'm not Stretch Armstrong. I cannot be pulled in every single direction to infinity and beyond. And that was Buzz Lightyear. But you get what I'm saying. Like, I can't do it. So I, I had to take a step back in December, and I was like, what am I going to do? Um, I can't, I can't serve everybody basically. And I was like, am I going to focus on? helping teachers or am I going to focus on helping students? And it was like, well, you guys aren't going away <laughs> and I can't say no. Um, plus I really, really like coaching and I really like helping you guys. So, um, in December I made the, um, I made the, uh, decision that I would start, um, slowing down my classes and focus more on helping teachers. So I started doing that, um, more of a focus this year. And my announcement here is that I have almost completely went to helping teachers now. So I have kept a few students, um, but for the most part, I have gone to helping. That was a huge, huge, 
change for me to make and a huge jump for me to make. But um, yeah, so that's my announcement. So this week and next week, I do have this strategy calls that I'm doing. The link is in the description box for that. Okay, so um, Elian, Elian, Elian. I think I'm saying your name right. One of them wants to know how to get students online from Asia. So when you say Asia, I am assuming that you mean China and your best bet for that is going to be on WeChat. So using, using WeChat um, is going to help you get your students. That's the best way to market. It's also using WeChat is also really, it. It's, it's not hard to market in China once you know how to market in China. It is a completely different social media platform. It is a big adjustment and it is something that you have to learn how to do. The good thing about marketing in China is that people will share. Um, it's very easy to get it out and like market yourself. Um, also, it's all organic. So where you might go on Instagram or Facebook and you might um, be tempted or have to use and you don't have to use them. But some people, a lot of people will use paid methods such. And when I say organic, I mean, it's like organic traffic means that you're not paying for them. You're not paying for ads. You can't do ads in China if you're not in China. So people who are marketing on other platforms, they might be tempted or feel like they need to use ads to get students in, which you actually don't have to. But a lot of people might do that. On WeChat, that's not even an option. So you have to learn how to grow organically. The bad thing about WeChat is that there are a lot of teachers on there already. Most of the people that you're going to run into, you, you're not the only teacher that they're coming face to face with. And if you don't know how to market yourself appropriately, you're going to be lowballed. So um, people will, um, and that's actually for um, the members of the Independent Teaching Academy, that's actually what we've been talking about this past week in our coaching sessions. But um, if you don't know how to market yourself appropriately, they are, they are gonna lowball you. You really have to make sure that you're showing your value and really showing like what results you can get them it, like while they're learning English, assuming that it's English that you're teaching. Um, because otherwise you just become a teacher in the sea of teachers and they window shop and they are just looking for the cheapest teacher they can get a lot of times from a certain location. Um, like they'll look around, they'll be like, okay, like I'm looking for a teacher from America or a teacher, you know, with a British accent or whatever. And they'll just like take as many trials as they can find the most acceptable teacher for the cheapest price. Um, the way to do that or to, the way to avoid that is to make sure that you're really showing your value. And that will really set you apart because I'm on WeChat and I can tell you that it is very, very, very rare that I see a teacher that's doing it correctly, if that makes any sense. It's um, just spamming your business card doesn't get you students. Going into groups and spamming your business card doesn't get you students. But once you learn how to do it, it's really easy. All right. Do we have any other questions? You guys are quiet today. All right. Um, other companies. There are other companies that, you know what, let me see here. I'm going to look at my group really, really quick. So in my Facebook group, and if you have not joined uh, my Facebook group so far, and I think the majority of you probably have, but it's called um, Online ESL Teacher Success and Support Group. So it's that group right there. So if you have not joined that group right there yet, make sure you're joined in there because people do post, um, they do post job ads in there. And um, I kind of um, moderate the group as, as far as like what's allowed to be posted because I don't want teachers to get scammed or spam. So they have to list the company name and what they're paying people because nobody wants to submit an interview, go through, get accepted for a company. They don't even know what they're, who they're working for. And then suddenly be like, okay, like you're going to get paid $4 an hour. Like 
if a recruiter is coming in and trying to recruit teachers, they need to respect the teacher's time. And if they cannot respect your time in like the interview or making an intro video or even filling out an application by being upfront and honest, then that's not a company you want to work for anyways. So if you do join that group, um, occasionally you will have recruiters go in there and post positions, but um, make sure that it's a pay that you want to work for. You fig figure out what you need to get by and don't accept anything less than that. All right. <clears throat> Do we have anything else? I'm here. I'm all yours. I'm an open book. So um, let's see. Um, ba -da -dun -dun -dun. So I know like the three, the three big companies that I would recommend right now. Well, it would be like a company or independent or my quote class. Um, you are always a company that you should always have because you have complete control of that. And, you know, if, if you're working, so everybody's circumstances for wanting to teach online are completely different, but for the most part, um, it usually has to do with like flexibility, pay, um, you know, I, I've seen people saying, I have seen people saying before that teaching online is a low paying job and that is incorrect. It's actually a very good paying job. If you know how to do it right. Um, you're working for the right company, you know how to do marketing. Um, I'll actually talk about this really quick too. So if you're working for a company, there, there are two different kinds of marketing. And I know that marketing and this, I basically call marketing the extended four letter word. People hate it. They're scared of it. It sucks. Um, it, as far as learning how to do it, once you learn how to do it, it's easy. But marketing is like the extended four letter word and people are like, oh, I don't want to market. But you have to understand that the second that you open up classes, whether you're independent or working for a company, you are marketing. There are two different kinds of marketing. You have your internal marketing and your external marketing. So say you're working for a company like um, OutSchool. I'll pick OutSchool because that's a really popular one. And that's one that I would recommend too. So say you're working for a company like OutSchool. Um, OutSchool is going to um, help market your classes and they have ways that they can market your classes but everything that you do is part of a marketing strategy the intro video that you put up your profile picture your bio how you list your name the classes that you list how how you refer to the next classes your strategies on all of that all of that is marketing no you cannot send out emails to students no you cannot like you know you can't do email marketing with them your external marketing would be, say you have um, an Instagram and you want to market your out school classes and you are marketing them on Instagram. That's all external marketing. And honestly, if you're doing a lot of external marketing, um, it's probably better just to redirect that to your independent business rather than out school where they're going to take 30%. I mean, let's be real. If you are marketing for out school, then, um, and you're getting results from it, then you might as well like have those students as independent students. But yeah, <laughs> if that makes any sense, but it's up to you. Like you, you create your own marketing strategy and decide what you want to do. I know a lot of teachers are really successful, especially with flex classes on out school marketing their flex classes. It's easier to have them in one place rather than two different places like independent and, on out school. But even with flex classes, like the rules for flex classes are so insane and they don't work for all teachers. So even that, if you want to do that, it'd probably be better to have it as a outside of out school um, class. All right. Do you have any other questions? Who here? I know we don't have a ton of people on right now, but on live anyways, but has anybody scheduled um, a strategy call? Let's see here. I have calls for um, 
set up this week. So I've blocked off my schedule so I can talk to some teachers. I got a lot of calls booked. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to you guys. Um, let me see. It's so weird having like a one off with you guys like this and I can't see you because I like feed off your energy. I think I have once or twice in January. Um, Alexandra, that was not the once or twice in January. That was actually coaching. That wasn't a strategy call. That was coaching. It's a little bit different, a little bit different, but yeah. All right. Yeah, because that was in the um, the coaching program that I was running in January, which has closed. So, um, okay, if you are already a member of the coaching program, you no, it's okay, it's okay. If you're already a member of the coaching program, um, I'm not going to boot you. Like you, you, you'll still do the coaching. We do the coaching on Saturdays at seven, um, so you could still do that. But what I noticed was that a lot of people. It was, it was really hard to work with everybody's schedule. And I also noticed that a lot of people were coming in to the coaching program and they were having the same questions. So like the same people, like everybody, everybody that's doing this, there's, it's a very simple roadmap. It's a very simple, um, you know, step by step by step strategy. But um, that's why I created ITA because independent teacher Academy, sorry, because the simple strategy was something that I had to spend the time talking about, which is fine, but your time with your time spent coaching is much better utilized if you actually have that roadmap in front of you with like step-by-step -step instructions and you can go through it at your own pace and then use the coaching time that you have to like further define that, ask any questions or like ask other things. So that's why that's kind of where um, independent um, teacher Academy was birthed, I guess, was that I wanted to give you guys something that worked better than just coaching. Cause if I can, if I can lay it out in front of you where you can see it and make sure that it's like all planned properly. So it's easily, you know, easy to see it's, it just works so much better. All right. Do we have any other questions? I do have a call, I think in like 20 minutes. So let me see here. Yes. So I won't be on here for very long, but if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. I'll stay on for like another couple minutes. Um, and actually ITA started, I had no idea how good it was going to be. <laughs> like you ever do something and then like you take a step back and you're like, wow. That is freaking amazing. That's what, that's what happened with independent teacher Academy. Like I started it and it, like, it was just supposed to be basically a roadmap to show you exactly like step-by-step -step strategies, but it turned into so much more. Um, I haven't added it to the website, but the last module in the course is actually creating an evergreen course, um, which I should probably explain a little bit better because that's not, um, I asked in my group and nobody knew what that is, but evergreen is basically where you create something, you create something once you create a sales funnel for it. And then students can enroll and take, you know, take your like, you know, pre-recorded lessons or, you know, whatever, however you decide to do it on an ongoing basis. So you don't have to teach the one-on-one -on -one lives and it, it gives you, you can either turn that into your main source of income, or it could just be like a residual income, however you want to do it. Um, so, uh, that was added to it. And then, um, I also started adding scripts and templates. So I actually, I was having so much fun making them. I made a bunch of templates for like your WeChat, um, like flyers and, um, cards and everything that all you have to do is like literally like drag and drop your picture and your WeChat ID and then like change the information in it. And like, these are high converting cards. I'm like, I've been having so much fun with it. And then we have the coaching because obviously I don't want to have a, um, 
a program where I'm not talking to you guys. I want to be able to talk to you guys and make sure I'm meeting your needs and make sure that all of your questions are answered and, you know, really guarantee that your success because um, it's, it's hard, you know, like you went from just being a teacher and being a successful teacher to like, Hey, now you're a business owner, you're a marketer, you're a scheduler, you're the head teacher, you're the salesperson. And it's like, wait, I, that's not, no, I don't, no, 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 don't make me do all that. I don't know how, you know, like you can have all the teaching skills in the world, but if you're not in front of students, you're going to be the world's best kept secret, you know? So it's, it's just, I don't know. And like, especially like seeing what happened with Palefish. Like, I mean, I've seen it with every single company, but for some reason it just hits me hard with Palefish because I knew it was coming. Um, we all knew it was coming. They have lied to teachers saying that it's not coming. It's not coming. Um, you won't get a pay cut. You won't get fired. Then all of a sudden it's like the students are being told they can only have Chinese teachers, which we know is the law. Um, I don't know how they got away this long by doing that. Um, and the teachers are one by one getting kicked from the platform for like BS reasons, really. Um, and it's just, they, they stopped caring about their teacher a lot, teachers a long time ago. And the teachers are the backbone. They're the foundation of the whole program. They would not have a program for kids to learn English from native English speakers. Cause that's how they market themselves if they didn't have the teachers. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. You get things backed by investors. The investors don't care about the teachers. They don't care about the clients. They just care about the bucks. And it's not cool for anybody. And that one just hits me hard because like I said, like a lot of you guys know me from Palefish because I used to mentor there and I helped, I, I had, um, I think, I think I had 3000, it was like three or 4,000 teachers, um, under, under my mentorship or whatever. So like, obviously I haven't personally talked to every single one of those teachers. I, I can't give you all of their names and, you know, but a lot of them, a lot of them are teachers that I like, I made friends with and it's just like, ugh. <sighs> all right. I'm going to end this. I'm going to take off. Um, if you want to set up a strategy call, it's in the description box. And, um, if you already set one up, I'll see you guys later. I'm looking forward to working with you guys. And um, if there's anything that you want a YouTube video made for, like if there's anything that you're like, hey, can you you know show us how to do this or whatever, leave it in the comments. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss my future videos. And I will see you guys all later. All right, I got a busy day. <laughs> But seriously, it makes me so happy when I have, when I work with a teacher. Okay. So like, you know, that feeling when you work with a student and like, they're not getting it, they're not getting it, they're not getting it. And then they finally get it. That light bulb goes off and like, you see that success and you see that, like, um, you just see that change in their eyes. Like they get it and you're proud of them. And like, that's how I feel about you guys. So when I'm, when I'm working with somebody, especially when I'm working with somebody like either one-on-one -on -one or in the ITA program or whatever, and like you guys are my students. So when I'm working with you and then like you're struggling with something and we work to solve the problem and you get it figured out. And then suddenly it's like, oh my goodness, you've got it. I'm so proud of you. It is like the best feeling ever. And I hit this, this week, um, focusing more on teachers and working with teachers when I want and just getting those like basically aha moments where like you suddenly get it and it's suddenly working. That is like the best feeling. I am like glowing on the inside from it. <laughs> like I might be busy with all these calls that I've got with you guys, but it is like so, so rewarding because it's not just learning English. It's literally changing people's lives. Like, like people who have, I, I, I don't want to call anybody out, but I've worked with some people that have been in some really, really, really bad situations. Um, like, did you know, was, is it Lithuania? Somebody's from Lithuania, I think. Gas there's like $27 a gallon. Do you guys know that? I think it's Lithuania. It starts with an L. Lithuania, $27 a gallon. 
Like, can you even imagine surviving on $27 a gallon? Like, like having to go to work and like pay for 27 United States dollars. So like the exchange rate, 27 bucks a gallon. So it costs like what, like $400 to like fill your tank. And then like making, you know, getting a huge pay cut on top of it because of the economy. It's like, I know. So when I, when I'm working with somebody, when I'm working with somebody like that and like somebody like that, like has an aha moment or they're getting it or like, you know, they're putting the work in and they're seeing results or, you know, and like, different people in different situations. Obviously that's the worst situation I have seen because I don't know how you can possibly get out of that situation without like really putting the grit in and having a strategy. But that's like the worst one I've seen. But like when somebody that's in a really bad situation is able to pull themselves out of it, and you know puts the work in and then they come back and they're like oh my god like i'm now making like fifteen hundred dollars a week and it's like yes 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 you like that's like the best thing ever knowing that like your effort you know it's the same thing like when you're teaching english to kids right like your efforts did that for somebody like i'm like walking on clouds this week it's like the <laughs> like it was such a huge decision to go from teaching students to teaching teachers but i know it was the right one and it's exciting um what was something else like um oh and then like you guys for those of you who don't know my own story um i started working i i started working for online teaching um i started with companies and then i eventually went independent but i started working when i was like on food stamps and medicaid and for those of you that are not in the united states those are government assistance programs and i started working for these companies thinking that it was going to be like the transcription jobs. Like I did the transcription jobs before where you end up making like pennies. I don't recommend them. I thought like they were going to work, but like I got into this, um, really at my rock bottom and decided that I was going to learn everything that I possibly could to make it work. And like, I didn't have somebody to really show me the work, the ropes. I just talked to as many people got like, got, advice and mentorship from wherever I could, watched videos, learned the industry, just just sucked up all the information, talked to students, talked to um, people that like, just like sucked up all the information that I could, absorbed everything. So I could just like know everything. And I'm not saying I know everything still, but that's what I did. And then December of 2018 is when I started. And I was like lost, clueless, hoping that it would work. Um, by, uh, December of 2019, a year later, I was putting in on a bid for my first house. I was completely out of debt, had bought a brand new car and, um, also put in a bid on my house, which I closed on in February of 2020, cause it takes forever to close. So like you, in a year, in a year, $20,000 worth of debt paid off, bought a house, bought a car. <laughs> It was like, this works. It works. Like teaching online works. So like, don't ever think that it's a low paying job. If you think that it's a low paying job, go get help. If you think that it's a low paying job, figure out what you're doing wrong and fix it because it doesn't have to be a low paying job. You can definitely survive off of it. You could definitely thrive off of teaching online. Um, it's all a matter of knowing, doing the things that you need to do, knowing what you need to do, having an action plan, having a strategy. And a lot of times you go into something and there's just so much being thrown at you all at once. Like you're like, okay, I need to figure out who I'm teaching, what I'm teaching, where I'm teaching, what platform I'm using, what I'm going to charge, how I'm going to market, how I'm going to teach. I've never taught before. Do I need a Tesla, a Tesla, a Celta? Do I need a degree? Like how do I like stand out from the crowd? There's a million other teachers out there. And, um, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in all at once. So, you know, all right, I'm going to take off, get a call in 10 minutes. So I will see you guys all later. If there's anything that you want to see in future videos, post it in the comments, make sure you're subscribed and um, I'll see you guys all later. And if you haven't joined the group, I'll pull it up for you guys again, because I'm not screen sharing right now. But if you want to join the Facebook group and you have not, and I think probably most of you have, um, it's grown pretty big. But if you want to join the Facebook group, that is my Facebook group. So it's the online ESL teacher success and support. And um, when you go to join, there is a, if you put your email in there, I will send you over the cheat sheet for going independent. So if you need like a starting point. All right, guys, I'm taking off. Thanks for coming on.
chatting with me and I'll see you guys all later. All right. Have a wonderful day.